John Lurie has a new show. I hear. Oh, Painting with John. We watched the first episode How was yesterday. It? It's better than Fishing with John. Fishing with John was always a little too bizarre. The hardest I ever laughed at anything with someone else was at the end of the Willem Dafoe episode of the Ice Fishing. After 14 days, John Lurie and Willem Dafoe died. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we've got some postcards here. This is from Brian in Asheville. I know what just came up, but I'm wondering if you saw Mank yet on Netflix. I can't believe how much I hated this movie. Brian, you should check out our Rumblefish episode, which just came out last week, and you'll know how we felt about Mank. Opinions are divided here in the basement. They're not divided very much. You kind of didn't like it. I kind of liked it. Ooh, we have Edda James, Eddie Cleanhead, Vincent Blues postcard there that's cool at last i didn't show off that one it's that fellow tyler dear matt craig tona and cats what is the first movie to have a sequel p.s i love your show the first movie to have a sequel dr mabuse probably dr mabuse might be the first although it took a while for the sequel to come out the first was silent and the second had sound and then there was one that came out like in the 60s oh yeah chicago lakeshore drive tim what is your favorite running gag in a movie or TV series? Keep up the good work. I can't think of an answer here. We should save this. This is something that yeah, I... Yeah, save that. Put put that with your questions. We're going to think about that. We're, I, I'm going to pray on that one, Tim. Okay, and Rosemary says, I love Stu, and I was hoping he could wish me a happy birthday, please. Thank you so much. Your show is a bright spot and a sad time. Rosemary. Okay, Stu. Hey there, Rosemary. It's Stu. Happy birthday. I spent my birthday working a double shift at the plant. <laughs> Stu is very hardworking. Yes, he has many jobs. And he's very unsentimental about birthdays. If you're ever in Chico, California, there's a National Yo-Yo Museum. And we have a card here from Jackson in Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia, where nights are sultry. Yep. Open this up with a samurai sword. This looks like a homemade Polar Express postcard. <laughs> There's a Tom Hanks saying, we got it. And then a frowning me saying, I knew this nightmare would come. And then Craig saying, Tom, please, you're scaring my kids. <laughs> Dear Matt, Craig Tone and the cats, I am allergic to. I just remembered I have a whole stack of personalized letters. I never use them. I'm giving you one to say tag. Thanks for creating my favorite movie review show on YouTube. Your weekly wholesomeness. Weekly wholesomeness is a great breath away from the brooding postmodern funk I put up with in film school. Mm. Oh, I like that. Question, is there a film you love that you think no one else has heard of? Not even the person in front of you. Keep up the smiles and chuckles. Film that no one's ever heard of. I got one. What's that? Clara's Ghost. It is made by the Elliot family. Chris Elliot... His two daughters, his wife, and it's about a woman going insane because she's married into this showbiz family. All right. When you go to welcometothebasementshow.com, there are PayPal donation buttons you can click on to support our show with a one-time or rolling monthly donation. I'm gonna now going to say the names of some of our rolling monthly donors. Melanie, Grant, Greg, Adam, Ella, Emily, Mitchell, Ralph, Caitlin, Kai, Mike, Shannon, Kempson, Gail, Jerry, Alfred, Bernard, JP, Thomas, Shelby, Justine, RPC Services, Chris, and Laura. Laura! And we'll be reading some more of those later in the show. Why don't we open a package? We a don't have, package. We don't have a lot this week. No, we don't. We'll open what we got. I'll start with this one. This is from someone in Gray, Georgia. Gray, Gray, Georgia. Gray, Georgia, not as sultry as Savannah. Seth. In Gray, Georgia. Hello, welcome to the Basement Crew. My name is Seth, and I've been a fan of the show after watching the Altered States episode. Welcome to the Basement has become a Friday viewing tradition within my household, with both my parents and brother eagerly awaiting each new episode. Enclosed in this package are several postcards from varying decades, locations, and realities. <laughs> also included is a slightly used copy of my favorite... Mamoru Hosada film, The Boy and the Beast. Anime hijinks with samurai swords. Has there ever been a film you had high expectations for only to then be disappointed upon its viewing? For me, for me, it was a film Hail Caesar. You and me both. This Boy and the Beast movie looks really fun. I am looking forward to watching this. Taos Pueblo from New Mexico. You're better at throwing, I'm better at catching. We have the Royal Gorge, where the Queen lives. 
to Monticello, where the president lived. There we go. The Armada Inn, where I live. Mesa Verde, been there. El Coyote Cojo. It's time for some viewer questions. Liam Carroll. What is one song you never want to hear in a movie ever again? For me, it's a tie between Bad to the Bone and What I Like About You. Those are two choices. I would add Good Lovin' by the Young Rascals to that list. For me, Sweet Caroline, wah, wah, wah. That scene in the midnight sky mm -hmm. where they have that Sweet Caroline single, I wanted to puke. I hated that so much. <laughs> I thought... Sweet Caroline, yeah. that's the song. We're going to talk about The Midnight Sky very soon on this show, but not today. But anyway, uh, Sweet Caroline is a good song that has just been ruined. I can't stand songs where whenever they come on and if ever there's a group of people, everybody just got to sing along with it. The Monkees Daydream Believer is a beautiful song, but I hate it because everybody, not only do they sing along, they sing along in their best English accent Daydream believer and uh, oh God, I can't You're doing stand it, it. I'm doing it myself. My answer for that question, well, they say there is a secret chord, <laughs> and it shows up in everything these days. It's Hallelujah, sung by whoever is laying around, because everyone sings that song. I want to go three years without hearing that song, so I can hear it with fresh ears and be like, oh. This is the most beautiful song ever written. I don't have to be reminded because it plays at the end of a Law & Order episode. It's the most beautiful song ever sung as long as it's not sung by Leonard Cohen. <laughs> Every other version of the song <laughs> is great. But Leonard Cohen, it sounds like the troll under the bridge is singing Hallelujah. Rumble Fish, starring Abe Vigoda. That's a reference for old folks. <laughs> You're supposed to meet him tonight under the arches behind the pet store at about 10 o'clock. I'm only going back to the arches if the McRib is back. Sit down. Cats constantly fighting and arguing amongst yourselves like typical fucking Yebo. Watch your language, God. I need to take this blue pill or take this red pill, but stop wasting my time. Don't have to watch that language. Actually, we do have to watch that language. That gang shit was out of Staying alive. Staying alive. Oh, get off that pipe before Penn gets on. It's going to bend right over. <laughs> What's with Nicolas Cage acting all normal? Where's Steve? Steve. Maybe he's late. Maybe he's pregnant. Sadie, get out of there. There's going to be a rumble. Hey, sweetie. Would you like a day? Huh? Go write a novel. I'm gonna be just like him too. I'm gonna look like him. You ain't gonna never be like that, man. He's a ten. You're only a seven. Twist and crawl, twist and crawl, twist and crawl. It looks like a storm's rolling in. We better get inside. Main Saint Lounge. <laughs> saint Lounge, the patron saint of sloth. When I get records in our P.O. box, I make every attempt to listen to them, and I listened to one this past week. This is Planetarium by. By that, by that guy. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Suf Jan Stevens. Yeah, you can tell me how to pronounce it, and I still won't know how to pronounce it. This is how you know you're getting old. Mm -hmm. When thoughts come into your head like, why can't he just have a normal name? <laughs> Sammy Stevens. Yeah, he is probably within five years of our age, and yet we're acting like he's 12 years old and on our lawn with that name of his. Anyway, Planetarium. Okay, once upon a time, Sammy Stevens pledged to make a album for every state in the Union, 50 states. He ended up making two. Here he's made an album about the entire solar system, so in a way he's reached his goal. And that just proves a statement that you've made previously, is that this guy really makes... He really merges pop and classical music. I heard him talk on NPR about his album that he made about the BQE, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. It's like they're talking to Gustav Mahler here. And that's great. He's finding a new way of, of making classical music, just like George Gershwin did. There is a, a great variety of music on here. A lot of it is ambient. There's a lot of kind of classical compositions there's some straight up rock music this track the second track jupiter that is one hell of a song i enjoyed listening to this good job sammy now last time on the show i talked about this album fishbone self-titled ep this is their debut ep 
And I talked about it, but I had not actually listened to the record because I've listened to this dozens of times. So I didn't look inside, unfortunately, and I didn't realize that included with this record is this beautiful vintage Fishbone concert poster. Fishbone and Living Color in Portland and Seattle. In Portland at the Pine Street Theater in Seattle at the Moore Theater. Look at that. Yeah. Think this, of going to that concert. This is the kind of stuff you love to find in old records. Like that weird Alice Cooper fan club application. <laughs> Which we still haven't applied for. No, we haven't. We haven't. But uh, but this, this is great. Look at that. I should have this framed. Oh, we've got to the rest of the donors. We've got to the rest of the donors. You want to know their names? Well, here they are. Reed, Patrick, Jed, Mark, Jeff, Anthony, Lindsay, Kieran, Catherine, Stephanie, Stefan, B.A. Mikey D, Brett, Peter, Isaac, Ghost T Labs, Ryan, Marissa, and Beth. You know them. You love them. Maybe you're looking at them right now. Bravo. We've got one more package. Yeah. I just got it today when I went to the post office. It is from Therese in Australia. Hello to Therese and Lexi and Andon. The whole crew down there. Oh, I hope there's food in here. I hope there's food. But I'll be happy with whatever's in here. <laughs> I hope there's food. Hinting for the future. More or less the usual box of nonsense. I see food. Oh. Okay, Australian movie for Matt. And the answer to the question, which has undoubtedly been prominent in his thoughts. This is Sunday Too Far Away with Jack Thompson. Friday Night Too Tired, Saturday Night Too Drunk, Sunday Too Far Away. All right. We've all been there, Jack. It's about the toughest bloke in the toughest pub, according to the back of the DVD. Sure, Vegemite is pretty great, but what would happen if they mixed it with cheese? Vegemite Cheesy Bite? I am going to be trying this on a cracker. I can't have Vegemite Veget Cheesy Mite right now. Enjoy and the... A bunch of this other stuff is for Craig and his boys. We got buttons. Give me give me this back. Oh, buttons. Plastic buttons. Postcards. McKay, Queensland. Postcards. Oh, and we got some more tiny books. Mr. Big Nose. Cole's Little Treehouse. Mr. Big Nose and Captain Woodenhead. Mr. Big Nose, who do you think you are? Mr. Big Nose, you little Captain Woodenhead. Hey, I have a question for you. Yeah. You know the would I, would I joke? Yeah. What affliction does the guy have? Would I, would I, and the punchline is... Big well, Nose, Big Nose. Big Nose, Big Nose, yes. Some people say hair lip, hair lip. Yeah, I know. Hair lip, hair lip is too cruel. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. it is. I got into like a huge argument at a party once about the punchline of that. And for Tona, oh, oh wow, these are so good. These are going to get eaten up quick. Licorice all sorts from Taverners, Papa Sweets. Yes. Oh, these are so good. I'm going to eat half of this box tonight. I, and Tona will eat some too. Teresa's daughter made some licorice themed earrings. <laughs> uh, these are all sorts earrings. Look at that. This person has an Etsy shop. Imo Timo's Upcycled Art. Oh, this is Imogen. This oh. is uh, this is Teresa's daughter. Look at that. That's very creative. Just those, made them. Those look delicious. They look edible. And yeah. they feel like a candy. we got some fabric here. We've got... This is something here. This what is, is what this? this? What is this? Oh. Oh, more, more earrings. And this is something for your boys. These are, it's like a, you make your own postcard, I think. Oh. Koala and emu. Ooh, that's a, that's a fun little project. Yeah, a little snow day activity. You make a little sculpture. Oh, cool. Yes. Well, thank you, Therese. If it wasn't for you, we would have very little mail this week. <laughs> and thank you to Seth, too. It's not unboxing without something to open up. Thanks for joining us on Unboxing. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>